Hello there, it is Christy, and I'm, I apologize if I sound a little hoarse, I've, I've got a bit of a, a cold, um, but then again it, it tends to make my voice sound really husky, so I don't know that that's really a bad thing. But uh, for those of you um, who have been following my reading of my feminist research on my channel, there has been enough really genuine and really kind comments encouraging me to continue and I appreciate that a lot and um, you guys are a bunch of geeks. Uh, I say that all the time because it's, um, uh, yeah, I just uh, am kind of amazed at the sort of the hunger for this kind of nerdy thing. I always assume that people aren't interested so I'm always pleased and really impressed that people um, find this topic interesting and want to know more. But as we will proceed in my thesis the thesis assumes that you have statistical knowledge and assumes that you know how to interpret coefficients. And because in the general population, statistics aren't taught at university or at school, um, and they are taught at university, but it's, it's something that you sort of have to take a specialist class in. It's not a basic requirement like algebra or geometry or something. It occurred to me that it would be very useful if before we got to the statistical analysis, if I provided some kind of background for those of you who don't have training in statistics. When I was a postdoctoral fellow and also during the course of my PhD, I was involved with courses on quantitative research methods, including the use and interpretation of statistics. And at um, Birkbeck College, University of London, uh, I did courses on qualitative research as well. So to prepare you for the series of numbers that you're going to hear in chapters 3, 4, 5, and 6, I thought that I would take this opportunity to read out a piece that I'd written as a, a working paper. Uh, I presented it for a conference. And uh, yeah, it basically it's a way for me to help people who don't understand statistics to understand statistics. I often, I mean, I struggled with mass, maths growing up and confronting my fear of numbers and statistics was something that was a big part of my PhD and as a consequence I get people who don't feel comfortable working with numbers so when I describe statistics I do it for people who have background in the humanities or people who um, really tried to get out of taking any more math classes as soon as they could so for those who are sort of um, statistically fearful and I'm reading this from my uh, paper called What Does It Mean If Gender Is Not Is Statistically Insignificant? And this section will just explain what I consider the four S's of um, interpreting statistical research. So I'll stop talking now and I'll get on to reading. And this will be important again to understand the tables I'll be presenting in future chapters. What are we controlling for? And a note to those without a statistical background. Statistical models often include a series of demographic control variables that may affect the variable of interest in order to more precisely estimate the effect of the theoretical variables of interest. The assumption behind the control variable for age is that aging is a causal mechanism that could produce variation in the dependent variable. We would predict, for instance, based upon theory and previous findings, that the older people get, the more likely they are to vote. Incorporating a sex slash gender variable in statistical analysis assumes some causal mechanism at work that is captured by controlling for the effect of being a man or woman. However, when the sex slash gender variable is significant in our statistical analyses, what are the causal mechanisms driving the variation? Until both sex and gender are more precisely defined, operationalized and tested with multivariate regression, we simply cannot say. In this paper, I investigate what happens to the statistical explanation provided by the man-woman variable after including variables that capture gendered attribute differences into a regression analysis. The advantage of using multivariate regression is that it allows for a more sophisticated exploration of the interrelationships among a set of variables. Reg regression can tell you how well a set of variables is able to predict an outcome, which variable in the model, or that, that would be the set of variables, is the best predictor, and whether a particular variable is still able to predict an outcome after the effects of other variables have been controlled for. In ordinary least squares, 
Regression is the effect of x1 on y, that is to say, the independent variable 1 on y, the dependent variable, is estimated controlling for the effects of all the other independent variables, x2, x3, and so on, in the model. To put it in a more straightforward way, in standard multiple regression, all the independent variables are entered into the equation simultaneously. That means each independent variable is evaluated in terms of its predictive or explanatory power over and above that which is predicted by all the other variables in the model. Each coefficient, that is statistically significant, is contributing unique explanation to the dependent variable we want to explain, or right, right here, the variable we want to explain, our dependent variable. The inclusion of gendered measures will estimate any effect over and above the explanation of the sex variable. If the sex variable is statistically significant before adding gendered measures, but are not statistically significant after the inclusion, the interpretation would be that the explanation that initially appeared to be the result of the respondent's sex was actually down to the gendered measures. If sex remains statistically significant after the gendered measures have been included, that means that being a man or a woman still had an impact despite any explanation provided by agency and communion. I provide here a short guide to interpreting statistical results for readers who do not routinely work with statistics. After teaching quantitative methods, I have created a guide to assist people interpreting ordinary least squares regression. I recommend looking at the four S's, significance, sign, size, and strength. The first S, statistical significance, indicates whether we can accept or reject the null hypothesis of no effect. If a value is marked as statistically significant, we presume it has an effect ranging from pretty darn sure, which is uh, the highest level, p equals less than 0.001, to fairly sure, p equals less than 0 0.01 to bare minimum sure p equals less than 0 0.05 is equal to or less than 0 0.05 I should say. Non-significant variables have no effect and can be ignored. Next, is the effect positive or negative? That is the second s, sign of the coefficient. Theory should predict whether an effect will increase or decrease the phenomenon in question depending on how it has been coded. Compare the positive or negative effect to the predicted outcome. The third S is size. How big are the standardized coefficients? For OLS regression, the standardized coefficient is called the beta. Ignore any positive or negative sign and order the statistically significant betas from largest to smallest. The variables that have the largest effects have the biggest coefficients. Those that have little effect will be close to or equal to zero. This coefficient estimates the amount of change to the dependent variable for a one unit change in the independent variable. The final S is strength. This refers to the ability of the model to explain variance in a dependent variable, sometimes called the proportional reduction in error, or PRE. In part, interpretation of the strength of a model will depend upon the appropriate method of analysis for the statistical technique used. But for the statistical analyses employed below and in my thesis, the value that represents the strength of the model will range between zero, no variance explained, and one, all the variance has been explained. The higher the PRE value, the more explanation of variance in the dependent variable the model as a whole provides. So just to summarize the four S's, uh, let me go up and, and read them so I have them in the same order. Significance is whether or not the coefficient has an effect. Can we reject, reject the null hypothesis of no effect? Sign, does it increase the dependent variable, the phenomenon in question, the likelihood of it, or does it go up, or is it a negative sign, does it reduce it? The size of the beta, which is the standardized coefficient, so you're measuring all the impacts, the impacts of all of the variables in your model uh, in a similar way to see which one has the greatest effect or which one has the least effect. And then strength, the overall variance explained when you put all of the variables 
um, uh, independent variables in your model and you use it to predict your dependent variable. How much of a, a change in, say, a person's um, left-right self-placement, how much of that variation can be explained using the variables, the independent variables that you're using in your model. I hope that this will be very helpful and make it easier to interpret. And these are just generally um, good things to look for. I'm talking here specifically about the way that it applies to ordinary least squares regression. But you can also apply similar logic to the way that uh, I will be interpreting logistic regression. There, instead of looking at how much change in the dependent variable is produced by a one unit change in the independent variable, I'll be looking at the, the odds going up or down because of, in a dichotomous dependent variable, if you're looking at, let's say, the likelihood of voting for labor or not, you can't measure that in steps like an interval level measure. You have a probability measure instead. And so we look at the odds and the odds ratio. Also with cross tabulation, you have similar things. Although you can't conclude causality, you do have statistically significant relationships that you can use to reject the null hypothesis of no effect. So that was basically all I wanted to say. And Feel free to listen to this again, or also feel free to remind yourself of this uh, before you start a statistical portion of the thesis. I think it should be helpful and make it easier to interpret the tables that I present so that you also feel more confident that you are understanding the conclusions that I'm drawing. All right, guys, I'm going to go have some orange juice and maybe take some pills. But thanks for your time and attention, as always. I appreciate it, and I'll talk to you soon. You've been awesome, and I've been Christy. I did that backwards. I've been Christy. You've been awesome, and I'll talk to you guys later.